Welcome back guys and thanks for joining me for another episode of my Swansea career on FIFA 16. We start today's episode off with a home fixture in the Premier League against Sunderland. This is the team that I put out there with Mane and Montero out wide. Sigurdsson in that number 10 role. Gomez up front who is just in form at the moment. He just cannot stop scoring and I was looking to him to uh, be getting all those goals in this game against Sunderland but they certainly proved no pushovers in this game. Barini came very close to getting the first goal of the game. The ball just hitting the side netting instead. But you can see how confident Sunderland were going forwards. Rodwell just charging into the penalty area without caring the world. Crossed it in, finding Jermaine Defoe at that far post. And he was very unfortunate. And we were very lucky because Jermaine Defoe doesn't normally miss from such a range to, uh, to not score there for Jermaine Defoe. So it stayed 0-0. Then it was our turn to attack. Sigurdsson with that first effort there with Monono getting the, uh, the save and I was starting to rush into things here before the break and uh, obviously our shots just weren't as clear cut as Sunderland's were. You can see Rodwell putting Fabianski to work again. Yes, it was a simple save but it was just the fact that Rodwell, the standout player without a doubt in this game for Sunderland, was just controlling the, uh, the tempo was controlling the amount of shots that Sunderland were having and I wasn't doing anything about it. And then there was Larson having a few pop shots at us as well who came on as a sub in the second half. It was just a good job we had such a, a cool, calm, confident goalkeeper in goal for this game. Fabianski pulling off some amazing saves, keeping the game level. And then in the, uh, the 73rd minute, Jefferson Montero got moving after that pass from Sigurdsson, dragged the ball into the box, went for goal. And sometimes this happens in football. The team that's less deserving of a goal, of a win, sometimes comes away with it. We did find ourselves in the lead against Sunderland in that 73rd minute. Time was running out for the uh, the Black Cats and it was Jack Rodwell to push his team on again to pick themselves up, dust themselves down and just crack on, try and at least get a point from this game now with what little time was remaining and it would be Jermaine Defoe to get that equaliser and what a finish it was. It just encapsulates what a striker Jermaine Defoe is. Confident whenever in front of goal, a real keen eye for goal as well and as Fabianski came out to me and he just dinks it over the top it's an absolute beauty from Jermaine Defoe one of the best I've seen when coming up against the computer I did decide to go for goal um, there with Gomez it was well on target but Manone had it covered all day long and you can see I was going all out attack with Swansea City and it would be Ashley Williams the captain for Swansea the centre back for Swansea who got the winner Manone with the shake of the head couldn't believe what had happened Sunderland they crumbled they'd given the game away in the dying embers incredible scenes all around the Liberty Stadium and what a finish from Ashley Williams leaving nothing for granted there just absolutely hammered the ball up into the the top of the net with with the help from a inside of the crossbar so Final score, 2-1 to Swansea, three points awarded, added to the league table. I'll certainly take that. It was a very tough home game against Sunderland. And then, how about this? The English FA offering me the chance to become the England manager. And I thought, you know, with the Euros going on at the moment in real life, I thought maybe this could be an option. It adds a bit of depth to this career mode as well, adding something a little extra. So what, what I will do for now is I went ahead and stalled the offer. So I'll leave that decision to you guys. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do I take the England job or do I just focus solely on Swansea? Certainly seems like a good offer as well because we've got the Euros coming up in this career mode and also the World Cup in a couple of years time. So I'll leave that decision to you guys. Let me know in the comments below. Then it was on to transfer deadline day. Could I put a few deals together? We did get a few offers for Jack Cork, rejected, and I did put in a couple of offers for Dominic Iorfa from Wolves and Courtney Howes, also from Wolverhampton Wanderers. Iorfa, right back, can play centre back as well, I believe. He's tall, he's mean, he's aggressive, and he's a really good age as well, where he's just going to keep on improving. And Courtney Howes, exactly the same could play left back could play center back 
just building for the future as well for the next couple of seasons, especially with someone like Dominic Iorfa. You know, he's going to be back up to Julian Korb and neither Angel Rangel's left. We've only got Kyle Norton as well on the sidelines who we can choose from. So th there could be a bit of rotation there when we've got a couple of cup games coming up in the FA Cup or the Capital One Cup and I mean look at his stats already he's already increasing his acceleration is 88 for a 20 year old 70 is just going to keep on getting better and better and the same with Courtney Howes is just going to need a bit more patience Welcome when developing him Albion, but it's a task I'm prepared to take on anyway up next for Swansea City we were away at the Hawthorns to take on the Baggers West Bromwich Albion Looking to continue our good run of form. I mean, we've uh, we've done well. We've battled ourselves out of difficult positions in in some games. We've come out on top in difficult games like that one against Sunderland. So I was feeling mighty confident for this game against the Baggers. We got the attack going early on with Sigurdsson and Jefferson Montero linking up once again, and it would be Sigurdsson to get the goal this time instead of Montero, as uh, Montero brought the ball back into the box done that quite a few times this season it's becoming like a, a signature move for this Swansea side at the moment but this time I found Sigurdsson and he just welled that right into the back of the net right in front of the West Brom fans nothing feels better but later on Sigurdsson again right in the thick of it just goes to show how valuable of a team player he is but it's Suarez crossing the end it was a good idea he was looking for that far post almost had Foster put off as he did come off his line, but his teammate Pocanoli was all over it, was able to head it out for a corner kick. Gardner up the other end for West Brom, had Fabianski beat, but just couldn't find the back of the net. Look at that for a shot, the ball just swerved away, so unfortunate for him. Now come the second half, it just seemed as though all fight had left West Brom. They didn't really want anything from this they didn't really care that they were going to drop all three points they weren't performing to the best of their ability and Thierry Ambrose uh, Loney from Man City I'm not sure if I actually put that in the video of me signing him up but he's now in the side for the rest of the season he did get a shot away he went out for corner you could see nothing came of that in the end Mane again without a goal how many games has it been now it's disappointed for him but in the end, we did win. We did get those three points. 1-0, not good here. enough. It needed to be better. We need to start scoring more goals just to liven things up a bit. And I was hoping that we could do that in this home game against Crystal Palace. I did stick in Dominic Iorfa at right back. I started him for this game, hoping that he could bring something extra instead of Julian Corb, who was lacking match fitness, to be fair. Didn't want to really push him to his limits uh, for this game against Crystal Palace so I thought this was a perfect opportunity to stick Ayofa in. For this game I was kind of expecting the same that we've come up against with Sunderland, you know, Palace, they're no pushovers, they've got a, a good set of players but you can see Ayofa as soon as he gets on the ball just adds so much sparkle to our performance. Look how I dragged the ball past him, then skip past another man. Cross it into the box to find Sigurdsson's head to find our first goal of the game in the 24th minute. Palace's keeper at that point just given up I think but look at Iorfa what great movement, great agility, so agile on the ball. It's, it's great to, uh, to see, great to work with as well and um, we looked for more in the second half with Sadio Mane leading the attack worked his way into the six yard area was so fortunate not to get the second goal but it would be Gomez on the rebound to absolutely leather the ball up into the roof of the net to make it 2-0 the crowd going wild at the Liberty Stadium all thanks to the hard work of Mane to actually work the ball into the box look at that skips past one and then he's one on one with the keeper but it's the end product, it's the finish, it's just not good enough for Mane for my liking at the moment. It needs to uh, certainly get better, but look at the pace of I offer as we move on with the game. Gets himself into a great position, finds Cork, does go for goal, and I offer almost scored on his home debut, but the ball was cleared off the line by Balazi. So, so unfortunate for I offer. He deserved it, he was the best performer on that pitch for Swansea City, for both teams overall. Certainly uh, minor man of the match. And then Montero with a quality ball forwards to Ambrose who isolated Dan, I think it was, and he hammered that up into the top left-hand corner to make it 3-0 to Swansea City. What a way to introduce yourself 
to your new club, to the new fans, which you'll be playing in front of for, well, the second half of this season. He took that so well. The control of the ball as he brought it down from Montero's pass and how he finished that as well. Absolutely sublime. So the final score, Swansea 3, Crystal Palace 0. Unbeaten in three games. We're still in for a shout for a Champions League spot for next season. And yes, I will put down that result and that performance to 20-year-old Dominic Iorfa. He was amazing in this game. Fabianski had, well, absolutely nothing to do. He could have easily brought along his favourite novel, had his back up against the post and cracked on with that. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching.